All right, I thought I would look at some of the new Birmingham pens that you can get. Um, they've got these fancy new boxes that they have now. Uh, the last one I got was just in sort of a plainish wood box. It actually had a different company name. It had just Knox, which is the name he has on some of the nibs uh, with what was on the box. And now we have this little cardboard stuff. There's two boxes inside this sleeve. And this one is the one that actually has the pen in it, right? So the pen was in here. And this just says accoutrement. I have no idea what you might get in here. Um, it, you know, all of these pens tend to come with converters, but the converters, at least I've always gotten them, they've been inside the pen when I get them. Um, so, Maybe there was a separate nib, if you had a, a second nib that came with it. The one thing that was in here, at least for this pen, was this little, this is actually quite thick. I don't know if you can hear that. Quite thick uh, cardboard. And it is the Certificate of Authenticity that has basically when it was made. Um, and you know, the serial number. So this is um, the first two digits of the year. So 2020, January 21st. And this was pen number nine of that day. And that's actually engraved on the pen. Um, so I have actually several of these. Uh, and we can sort of look at maybe kind of an evolution or sort of a thing. Because the original, the first one he came out with was the Model A, which was this very round. If I don't hold it, it's going to go everywhere, kind of a thing. Just for size comparison, this is a Jinhao 450. So you can see it's very nearly uh, the same size and pretty much the same shape. Um, there's no, as you can see, there's no, uh, you know, roll stop or clip or anything. And this is one. I don't remember exactly how long ago I got this. It, was, it doesn't have any engraving on it, so it's completely polished, polished very nicely. Uh, this is the Jurassic Amber finish, for those of you who are wondering. Uh, unscrews, like so. And this one has, if I can get it to show, I have a, a Nemo sign uh, one of their smaller stubs. Uh, this is, I want to say, a point eight millimeter nib. Uh, but you can see that you know, the sign has those nice engravings. Let me make this focus a little bit weird because of the shininess. Uh, but they do have that nice pattern, that sort of butterfly. Uh, right there on the nib. And one thing I was uh, asking Nick about recently, um, because you know the Nemesign name is sort of going away, at least as far as the pens are going. You know, there's no more singularities or any of those kinds of things. So you know, the question is, what's going to happen with those nibs? Um, he says he has no plans of not offering those nibs, although they might all of a sudden become, uh, well, not necessarily all of a sudden, but uh, they might become Birmingham nibs the next time he needs to get a new batch. Uh, whether they'll still have the same range or not, um, I don't know, but you may see that name change on that. And now I have a couple in the newer model here. These are the 6th Avenue. So if we can bring them in here. So it's got a flatter top. It's got a flatter top. And it is a, a bit longer and a bit wider, as you can see here in this comparison. These are the same model, just different finishes. This is more of a, I mean, it's a very nice acrylic, but this is basically just blue with some uh, pearlescent bits in there, and this is what he calls the cotton candy. Um, I think I've seen this kind of acrylic in a couple different places. So, um, you know, it, it is what it is. It's that uh, sort of blue and pink that you can see a bit, and again, that has some nice pearlescence going on. 
as well. Now these both have engravings. So this is the one, this is the one that I got recently. Let me see if I can make this happen in the light here. So this is engraved. Uh, no, I had it right the first time. So this is engraved. You can just about see, there we go. Birmingham, and that's the same serial number, the 2001, 2109. So everything gets some engraving now. That's the new thing. Apparently he bought an engraver, so that's what we're getting. So everything has that same serial number is now stamped in there. So you have sort of a date stamp uh, on the pen. Now this one was done, this was one of the first there we go. This was one of the first that was made. So instead of the full serial number, this says six of ten. Which he is still doing if it's the very first batch. The very first batch of that acrylic anyway. So this was the first time this acrylic was made in this model. Um, you know, then it's sort of the first edition or opening run or whatever he calls it. Um, so they get numbers sort of specially. So that's six of ten. You can probably just see. Now, one thing I will show here. So this guy, first off, this is kind of hard to do without a clip. So I'm going to try and see. That's one, a half a turn. That's a full turn. So basically, one full turn off. And you can see this sort of. You know, it, it actually doesn't show up very well here, but here there's a bit of a, and you can see something underneath that. And it's not necessarily all that translucent of, a, of an acrylic. Um, but if you look this way, and you can see there is definitely a piece of black plastic that is, you know, between the pen body, the pen body and the uh, nib, right? It's sort of a nib collar, I guess. Um, and the catch is that it really sort of belongs with the pen rather than with the, um, this pen does tend to sort of cross thread a little bit, there we go, um, rather than with the nib, right? In other words, if you bought a new nib, you would just get the nib. You wouldn't get another fee and you wouldn't get another one of those black plastic things. And that was true even way back when, right? This guy, again, you can see there's maybe something going on here. And if I hold it this way, it's kind of hard to see on the brown, but you can just barely see there's also some black plastic going on there. Now I did ask, and so this is something that has changed recently and then changed back, I guess, is that my understanding. Um, in that, I asked him, you know, is this like a new car that's designed to be screwed at? And the answer is maybe, I guess. Um, he changed the threading on this sort of interior piece. So it's not really a nib collar in the sense of if you're going to replace the nib, you still have to pull it straight out and that works just fine. That's how I tend to clean these things as well. I just pull it straight out. That's, you know, as per normal. Um, but he said that on these newer ones, the ones he made in say December and January, um, he sort of changed the threading a bit uh, in the hopes that that might change it might help it work better in eyedropper mode. Um, so this one has, you know, he said that this one, since it was you know, made in January of this year, it may not unscrew. Right. I have never tried to unscrew this. But this is what we're going to do right now is to see, because I'm sort of curious. I didn't want to do it ahead of time. I uh, figure that might skew some results. So this is sort of a brand new thing. I, I'm not necessarily really big on um, unscrewing these things as they are anyway. So this is clean-ish. I, you know, I just sort of ran some water through it. I didn't pull the nib uh, and feed to clean it out. I uh, just flushed it with water, uh, converters out. So let's see what happens if I try to unscrew this guy. I've got like a million paper towels here sort of balled up. So let's see how well this actually works. That actually works quite well. And that's the section, that's the thing. 
And it looks, and this is the thing I was kind of wondering because he was saying he changed it for that thing. And it's kind of hard to tell whether that's ink. There is some ink on the outside, it looks like, of that nib unit. I'm trying to, it's, some of it is right there. That's the water from when I cleaned it, I guess. And, but yeah, I think there might have actually been, now that I look at it, you can maybe kind of tell. It looks like there is some ink on the outside. I mean, on the inside of that section there. Uh, it's, you know, it is kind of a nice, but that definitely looks like that is ink spatter and not the actual uh, pattern of the thing. So I guess it's true, you know, because I tend to, I have been filling this from a bottle. And it looks like there's maybe something right there. That might still be something. So I might clean that out. See what's up. Um, so that might be something to be uh, concerned about, but it does come out very easily, I would have to say. At least this one does. Again, if you have a December or a January, maybe not. Although Nick did say that if that was an issue, um, he, would, he would be happy if you had one that was that tighter version. Um, he would be happy to send you a replacement, although he may not want to replace everything now that I've said that, but he certainly offered it to me. Um, I might clean in there, I guess. Now, one thing I might be wondering about, I don't have, I mean, if it was, since the thing is that black plastic thing never really needs to come out, if I actually had any, I might be tempted to like put some shellac in there to like fix it in and maybe block some of that liquid. Although you might still be getting some because you're filling it in from right here. I guess you're getting ink traveling in right there. I mean, that, that looks pretty flush, but I guess we're still getting a bit of ink in there. Um, you know, the, the one thing I will probably do when I, I will probably clean that out. I will probably put some silicone grease in there, see if that helps. Because to be honest, I mean, I'm kind of wondering, it's not like you can get anywhere. I've not had any ink like travel through that into the barrel. That's not been an issue with me. Um, but again, if you're maybe if you're trying to eyedropper, you know, then you have the barrel full of ink, you might not want ink coming out right in there. Uh, as he said, you know, he did that. It sounded like it maybe didn't help. Um, you know, I might try something like a shellac. If if I was if it was me, I might try something like a shellac or silicone grease. So shellac, you know, the downside obviously is it's going to be rather permanent, but you know that's the thing that can happen. Now, one thing, the other thing I wanted to compare with here, um, like I said, I do tend to like these smaller stubs. So this was. I'm uh, trying to read, I think that's a 0.8. You know, so that's one of the smaller stubs. And I think this one has, I think this one has a 0.6 on it. So we can maybe try to compare those, see if those look different, or maybe that's a 0.8 again. I don't necessarily remember anymore. But I do have some other ones to compare with. So let me put this away. So I have over here, I have an italics. And this was just a churchman's prescriptor. And this has a one point, well, it doesn't have a 1.1 on it. It has a medium italic, which I think is pretty similar to a 1.1. So you can maybe see how you know, the difference in that size. I wonder if this is a better way to compare. This requires me to hold things really steady. Uh, it's not something I'm necessarily good at before supper, but there we go. This would be a better approximation. If you hear me sniffling, I do have a bit of a cold going on, so it sounds like I'm underwater. The answer is kind of, I guess. Okay, and I also have a Knox. Uh, 1.5, that's actually what I have on this Jin Hao at the moment. And you can definitely see that's a much flatter thing going on. Right. 
let's try this little comparison here. Have to hold this steady and maybe it'll try to focus. You can do it. I can't try. All right, let me try it this way. Focus on something. There you go. All right. So you definitely can get that. You know, I don't see, this is really the uh, italics offers like a fine italic. Um, and I want to say there's somebody else who I'm forgetting that also has a fine italic. But, you know, these are like the only sort of 0 0.6, 0 0.8 that, you, that I really see on a regular basis. Does Singer have a 0.6 to the 0.8? I don't think so. All right. Anyway, just because we've got it here, this is uh, also uh, the Birmingham Notebooks. This is kind of annoying. I, I swore I wouldn't buy one, another one of these, and then I did, because this is going to be annoying. This is the first time I'm using it, and I'm never going to know anymore which way is up, right? Because the, the cover is, is the same on the front and the back. There's nothing. So I'm going to have to figure out a way so I know which cover is the front and which way is up. I figure we can write with some of these. So this is, I've already forgotten, but I'm going to write down model A because that's what it is. And the ink is, it's another, it's a Birmingham ink actually. I think I got this, I have a feeling I bought this early enough that maybe he was still sending a bottle of ink with the pen. So I don't think I picked this ink up. Brown is not actually color I normally like to write with. I actually kind of like this sepia. It definitely seems to fit pretty well with the with the pen itself. And this is I'm gonna call it a pointing nib. Now I tend to not write with this posted, not so much because of the balance. I mean, it, it fits in the hand well enough. It's just that this pen, for one, it looks kind of weird. Uh, it doesn't pose very deeply. It looks kind of weird because that's like on a real taper there where it posts. I just find that to look kind of bizarre. It doesn't really, it looks like something that's definitely just sticking off the back of something. Um, and also because I don't want to post it too deeply. There's no cap band that is relatively thin-ish. It's pretty solid, but it's you know relatively finished thing. So I don't I don't tend to um, post that. And so as far as like where this thing balances the center of balance, let's see if I can make this go without rolling. This is the tricky part. Is that it tends to balance right about there. That's, there we go. So that's the center of balance. That's where it wants to be. Um, that's sort of, granted I have like a half full converter in there. But you're going to have to have something in it when you're writing. So that's where it sort of balances. So that's when you're holding it at, it's going to be right about there. So that's, that's pretty, pretty solidly, you know, in the middle of where your hand is. So that tends to work pretty well. Again, this is a fairly wet writer. It is Tomoe. It's the 52, the, uh, the lighter Tomoe paper. That looks like so. I will write with a new one here. So this is the, uh, this is the 6th Avenue. And one thing that is true is not, it's not the same smell as, say, a Nudler's pen. I don't know if it's the polishing compound he uses. These things do have a bit of an odor that takes a bit of a while to, to wear out. So this thing still, I can definitely smell, even with my cold, I can definitely smell that this thing is happening. And as you might be able to tell from what you're seeing on camera, uh, this is, doesn't flow as well as I would like necessarily. I have not ridden with this for a couple days, so bit of a hard start there. This is organic studio nitrogen, so that blue with the red sheen that you're getting 
Um, hang on, that looks nice. And again, I think this is a 0.8. Yeah, but definitely looks, maybe this is 0.6. I'm pretty sure this is 0.8. And once this thing is going, you know, you can see that we, we're not having any issues with flow. It's just something you're going to have to use. I, mean, I think it's mostly the ink more than the nib, but, you know, because we're getting studio, I mean, that is a heavy sheeting ink, so it does require a bit of work. Penalize lays out a nice amount of ink though once you get it going. And of course the nib because of the stub. You do have that going. And so I wanted to compare those. I'm just gonna do it this way. My uh, my camera is at the front. I, I have my thing right up against my camera, so I can't like push it upwards. So now I'll never know which of this thing is the top and which one's the bottom. All right, so this is technically this is a italics Churchman's prescriptor, and this one has the italics. Uh, they call it the medium italic, and this ink is another Birmingham ink. Um, this is the Midnight Horizon. So this thing looks definitely very blue in the bottle. Like if you're looking at the bottle, you would think it is a blue ink. Um, try to think if I have somewhere in there I have the ink bottle. No, maybe I can show it in the converter. You know, if you're looking at it against glass, I mean it has a blue thing to it, but it writes almost black. Again, part of that, I suppose, is that this is a, a broader nib. Um, this is, you know, the 1.1, well, it's not really a 1.1, it's a medium metallic. Um, but I've always found it, you know, in, in just about any pen I write, this thing comes out at least gray, if not, you know, towards the, the, the much darker. And it doesn't have much of a blue to it, I don't see, when I'm writing with it. And again, this gives you that nice line variation you expect from any kind of italic stub or whatever. Like so. I have to admit, looking at it on the camera here, that does seem a little bit bluer than it really looks like. To me in person, this is a best sort of a pigeon gray. Um, it does look a bit more blue on the camera. All right, and then just for the final comparison, this is that Knox 1.5. Um, technically, it's on a Jinhao X450, but I'm just going to write Knox 1.5. And this is actually Pelican 4001 turquoise. Again, you know, this is a much broader thing, and therefore you get a much different thing. And it is a bit crisper, I think, than at least definitely compared to the italics. And then, you know, I, you can, it feels a little bit like you're almost cutting the paper when you're writing on the, you know, on the thin end. Um, I don't know if it's this pen. I think it is. You know, if it's not been a little while, the, the turquoise ink definitely sort of um, I, I, it dries out a little bit, and therefore it's a bit more concentrated when you first write. So you can definitely see it for about the first couple letters. Uh, it came out a lot darker, and then you do get some shading going on because, like right here, you get some. And then does show up in person as well. 
definitely see him right away. All right, we got sort of backwash. All right, I think I forgot to mention here. I did it with the Model A, which I do it here, which is where does this thing tend to balance? This one is actually a bit more, let's see, right about there. That's a bit further back on the pen as I seem to recall. Um, but it's a lot longer. I don't think anybody would probably want to or need to post this pen to write with it. But it is perfectly comfortable on posting. This one doesn't look maybe quite so bad. It doesn't post very deeply either. Right, because you can see that's only that far. A lot of, you know, things sticking back. And yeah, and again, there's no cap band. It's a little thin. So I don't want to push that on there very hard. And so it doesn't necessarily stay very well. But when you do that, that's where it balances. When you post it, it balances almost at the back of the pen there. All right, so now the, the you know, it's almost like the pen is resting on right here rather than sort of in the middle of your hand. And, I, and some people I think like to have the pen sort of balanced there, but I, as I understand it, most people tend to prefer when the center of gravity is sort of in the middle of their hand like that. Or at least that's what I tend to find more comfortable when it's balanced around sort of where the center of my hand would be. Okay, so that is, uh, you know, this sort of review of these guys. So again, these are the sort of two models. Now, I don't know what the plans are for uh, Model A, because right now there aren't any, except the super spiffy uh, Ebonite version. You know, I have a couple of the Ebonites out there. I don't think I've seen any new Model A's come out for the last little while. So I don't know if any more Model A's are going to be coming. Um, this is sort of the original, the Model A, and this is the new 6th Avenue. Uh, neither one of them have clips or any opportunities for clips. So you do have that uh, problem with rolling. Um, that's just something to be aware of. Um, again, I find them very nice pens. Um, they currently run um, you know, $99 for, you know, it's basically a hand-turned acrylic pen with, you know, a lot of nib variations. Now, granted, he does have, you know, zillions of nibs running around, but you can get uh, the Nima Sign Stubs, you can get the Nima Sign Fine Medium Broad, you can get the Knox, I think, 1.1, 1.5, whatever he still has in stock of those. Um, you know, you can still get those. You know, and lots of nib options. You know, as I said, probably the only sort of real, you know, um, competitor he has in those sort of nib range is the uh, italics pens. So I have to say I'm I'm very happy with these things. I don't think I don't think you can go wrong with getting them. The only catch is, um, you know, is he doesn't make very many of them because it's basically just a two-man operation, as I understand it. Uh, makes what he can. Um, so it's not quite the same as, say, you know, ordering a custom pen where you know you have a four-month backlog. Uh, just because he, he takes requests, sort of, he has on the web website, which is uh, birminghampens.com, uh, he has what he calls the production queue where you can sort of, you know, basically cast a vote for what you would be, you know, looking for to buy. Um, I don't know how how much that influences what order he does pens in. I think part of it is also just uh, what acrylics he happens to have around. I don't know how his acrylic stock is either. Um, but he tends to put a batch of 10 or 15 of these up every so often, and they tend not to last very long. I think this, you know, like I bought this the day it went out. I think that was nine of 10. Maybe I was nine to fifteen, but you know he he tends to run through them pretty quickly once when he gets them in stock. So you know, sort of keep an eye on it um, if you want. Uh, you know, they are definitely less expensive as you know. I don't know. I've never ordered a you know a custom pen. Even the sort of uh, the other kind of standard manufacturers like your Edison pens. 
are you know more than a hundred dollars so you know um and the customs are, are well above that so you know you you lose the ability to sort of actually specify the acrylics but he does have a wide range of acrylics and if you're willing to wait for the acrylic that you want to to come up you know then i would snap it up when it comes up because they, they tend to to go fast all right so those are the Birmingham pens, Model A, 6th Avenue. Uh, thanks for watching.